Today we're going to be taking a look at Apple's new products that they released back in March 17th. And these products were released through a press release on their website due to the current situation. They had no keynote event. So the first product we're going to take a look at is the new 2020 iPad Pro. And as you guys can see, it has the same design as the 2018 models with minor spec upgrades. So let's take a look at that. So the 11 inch and the 12.9 inch feature the same design and look, of course, as the 2018 models. On the back of the iPad Pros, they now feature a ultra wide and telephoto lens, as well as a new LiDAR camera, which we'll take a look at later on. And they feature the same color, silver and space gray, as well as the same smart connector on the back. For the starting price of $799 and $999 for the respective entry level models, they now come with more storage for the price. They both start at 128 gigabytes and go all the way up to one terabyte. And the RAM has been bumped from four gigabytes to six gigabytes standard. So on the 2018 models, if you wanted six gigs of RAM, you had to either buy the 512 or one terabyte models of the iPad Pros to get that extra bit of RAM. But now standard with any model going from the entry level 128 all the way up to one terabyte, you get six gigs of RAM standard. So that's a very nice insider upgrade in terms of system memory. As far as the size and weight goes, it has the same dimensions as the old 2018 iPad Pros. So you can use your same screen protector in your same case. As far as weight, it went up by a few ounces. That's due to the camera setup that made it just a little bit heavier, but you might not notice that right away. As far as buttons and connectors are concerned, it still has the four speaker array. It still has the microphone on the left hand side. It has the power button at the top. It has the face ID sensor in the center and it has your volume up and down on the left camera and microphone on the back, magnetic connector on the left, and on the SIM for the Nano SIM, it's on the lower left hand corner on the cellular models. Still has a smart connector on the back, as well as USB type C connector at the bottom. Included in the box, you get the same cable and you get the same 18 watt charger adapter that was introduced on the 2018 models. As far as the display is concerned, you still get the same 11 and 12.9 inch liquid retina. So currently there's no iPad that at the time being released with a mini, mini LED display that will come later on in 2020 quarter four. So you have the same resolutions on both as the previous generation, the same screen technology and the same setup as the knit brightness and everything. And in terms as the processor, you now have an A12Z chip. So the only difference between the A12Z and the A12X is that the graphics has been upgraded from 7 cores to 8 cores. So it's a minor bump. It's almost like if you bought an iPad 3 back in 2012 and then later on that following year, the same year, they released the iPad 4, which had the all in all exclusive upgrades in terms of processor display and really power performance. But if you buy this iPad Pro now, you will be having a device that still has the same speed and performance as the 2018 models with just an extra core for the graphics component, which is used for the LiDAR system. The cameras on the device have been upgraded. You got your same ultra wide and wide angle lens as the iPhone 11 with the same setup from those phones. Video recording has been upgraded to 4K of course with the standard being from the iPhone 11 it's capability brought over in the video recording department. The TrueDef camera is still the same 7 megapixels for the front facing camera and the Face ID sensor is still the same as 
the previous generation of iPhones. And the bigger upgrade to these devices is that the cellular and wireless got upgraded. The new iPad Pros now feature 802.11ax or Wi-Fi 6 with the dual band 2.4 GHz and 5 GHz with HT80 with MIMO support and Bluetooth 5.0 of course. Cellular has got extra bands in it for Gigabit Class LTE. Unfortunately we did not get 5G but that will probably be in the quarter 4 2020 iPad Pro refresh. As far as other connectivity and technologies, it has the same technologies as the previous generation iPad, just that the LiDAR sensor and the processor got a respective bump in it. As far as battery life, it's still the same 10 hour battery that was introduced on the first iPad, so you still get that same great 10 hours of battery, same battery rating and everything. It runs the latest version of iPad OS 13. And here are your built-in apps, of course, that you get, which you can customize and change how you like. System requirements, if you still like to do it the old-fashioned way, you can hook it up to your computer with Mac OS 10.15 Catalina using Finder, Mac OS El Capitan 10.11.6 through Mac OS Mojave 10.14.6 with iTunes 12.8 or later. And if you're still running Windows 7 or later, you can use, of course, iTunes 12.10 or later, and they give you a download link to download iTunes for your Windows PC. And of course, you have your languages support. And that's just about everything else this device has to offer on the technical side. So we'll take a look at the overview now. We'll take a look at some new features. As you can see here now, this iPad Pro, now you can buy a magic keyboard for it, which is backlit. But it will work on the 2018 model, so you don't need to upgrade to a new iPad if you bought the 2018 model. And if you don't want to buy this new iPad Pro, you can buy the 2018 model and still have this keyboard bought separately, but we'll be able to use it and it comes with a built-in trackpad on this keyboard. So Apple likes to hype up the iPad as a computer, but not a computer. So they go through their own way of defining what is a system that is not a computer, but is a computer in their own way, of course, with their emphasized on the Apple Pencil touch display and the trackpad with the keyboard that's bought separately of course and it tells you the iPad Pros are going to be available starting on the 25th of March and the Magic Keyboard is coming in May and the Liquid Retina display is still the greatest display they have on the iPad right now so it goes through a little display of how that works of course it still has your ProMotion Still has your P3 wide color gamut, true tone, ultra low reflectivity, and an ind industry leading color accuracy display at the moment. And here are the camera upgrades. So this is what the back of the iPad Pros now look like with the three setup, three camera setup in a way because the LiDAR is like a little camera in a way. So it gives you a look at the new 10 megapixel ultra wide and the 12 megapixel wide camera. And here is the LiDAR sensor. So it does light detection and ranging. So it's measured, used to determine distance by measuring how long light re reaches an object and reflects back. So it has a sensor in it, just measures how far light gets to a certain object in a room or outside which it can be used outside so it says right here you can use the lidar to measure up to five meters away both indoors and outdoors and it works on a photon level because of course it's going to shoot photons out of that sensor to really pick up 
up to five meters away what you're pointing the iPad to to scan, essentially. So it'll be used for, of course, the augmented reality, which they're really pushing that. And here is a closer look, so you can see both the sensors for it. it one of them's probably going to be the one that shoots the photons, and the other one's going to be the one that picks up those photons coming back towards the iPad to be processed by the chip. So when you go further in, you can actually see we're going towards the bigger sensor. And the bigger sensor is showing how the photons go. When the iPad scans a room and it lets you know this is how it scans the room with, I with the iPad OS software being tuned for this new iPad. So that's how it does it. Little individual photons go around and it scans an object. It looks like they're moving the iPad around a room. So it's scanning the chairs, the tables, the lamp, the plants, the plate, and everything else in the room that they're pointing to. Then, of course, they're going to talk about their augmented reality setup with this type of system. So they want you to place objects in your room to make it more realistic. And you can use it to shoot video like that and things of that nature. And it's going to talk about the cameras on the front. Still the same as the previous generation iPhones and current generation iPhones. And then here is the performance of the chip. So the chip just has an extra core for graphics, which is needed for the LiDAR camera and it's also been hardware reworked to work of course specifically for that LiDAR sensor for processing that data of course. So it shows you the other little pictures of what they want you to use the iPad Pro for of course. And they're going to tout Pro workflow if you need to use it for 3D CAD working or video game play on the device or whatnot. And also using Microsoft Word or, or Pages, Keynote, Numbers, Excel, whatnot to make high resolution um, documents and PowerPoints and Excel sheets and things like that. So it's just, they're just going through their little thing of what the iPad Pro can do that you can do on your computer but you can do portably. That's what they're of course getting to. So this is the iPad Pro and then now we have the Magic Keyboard. So it says yes it floats. So there the iPad Pro floats over the keyboard and on the lower end of the iPad Pro uh, Magic Keyboard has a USB-C connector on it. So essentially that connector you can charge the device through the keyboard and you can still plug in devices on the iPad directly through its USB-C connector, of course. So the iPad, of course, is going to attach to it magnetically. So there are magnets aligned in the iPad to obviously adhere to the Magic Keyboard. So the floating design gives the iPad a nice look of a laptop would look like and also as you can see in this demonstration of them closing it it has an adjustable hinge of course in this section right here so you can adjust it you can close it down and it looks like a laptop when you close it and the USB-C of course is in the back you can charge it right through the case and then when you open up the keyboard the keyboard has the same MacBook Pro 16 inch um, scissor switch mechanism, no butterfly keyboard, which is very awesome. And it's backlit, and the keys are not rubberized. They're actually the plastic keys, just like on their laptops, and the trackpad is in the center there. So it's probably the same glass trackpad, I would assume, if they're taking the design cue from the MacBook Pros, it would be a miniature glass trackpad. So they're going to tout it's a full-size keyboard of course with their scissor switch and their hard key caps and their backlit of course and the trackpad has been redesigned to work it's mostly been not redesigned in a in a physical way but of course through iPad OS has been tuned to work 
for this trackpad, so it's not going to have a cursor like you would see on Windows and Mac OS and Linux. And here's a little demonstration of what it looks like. So you can see this little dot over here. That's what it actually looks like. And it shows them going over and selecting items. And it does highlight the items. It has a little um, shimmer to them. So you can tell that the cursor is over it. And there you bring it up. So it does say you can use a trackpad or mouse. Of course, if you have a USB Type-C mouse or a USB Type-C to USB Type-A dongle adapter, you can use a mouse on the iPad Pro. So you don't have to buy this keyboard. But if you want something that's all-in-one from Apple, you can. But if you don't, you can obviously plug in your own mouse or even use Bluetooth to Bluetooth uh, wirelessly connect your mouse to it. So here they're doing a little demonstration showing you what the new cursor looks like. So it's just it would show you just how it operates with that little dot and how it can change. It changes over different elements that it goes over. And the next thing would be Apple Pencil. It's still using the same second generation Apple Pencil. It still connects up the same exact way. So that we don't have to take a heavy look into that. So that's with the iPad Pro. So this new iPad Pro it has very nice update to it for those that don't have a iPad Pro currently and wanting a new one or if you want to wait till the end of this year to get one due to what's happening right now. You can wait for a super cycle update which will get mini LED and the A14X chip and 5G and more battery life, you know, more of the hardware improvements that you're looking for. You can obviously wait if you want to wait for a better iPad Pro later in the year. But now we're going to take a look at their MacBook Air, which got a nice update. So the MacBook Air now starts at $999. And it features quite a bit of, a little bit of updates to it, which is very nice. So the color finishes that you get are still your gold, space green, silver. Base price is $9.99 and $12.99. With that, you still get the same 13-inch display, same resolution, and same aspect ratio and true tone as the previous 2018 model. You still get the same Touch ID sensor, which is probably either first-generation or second-generation Touch ID. The processor, you do get a little bump in processor in terms of the latest generation chips which is their new 10 nanometer construction chips now that they have. As terms of storage, you do get for the money, more for the money now. So instead of 128, you get 256 to start with, and you get 512 on the 1299 model. Of course, both of these models can be configured all the way up to 2 terabytes of storage. The MacBook Air also features 8 gigs of 3733 MHz low power DDR4X memory and it can be configured all the way up to 16 gigabytes. In terms of power and battery, still you get the same hour rate uh, hour ratings for the web, Apple TV and the standby time and of course the same battery configuration and the same exact charger and wall plug-in. Size and weight is still the same. Graphics is still the same. And as terms of hooking up this MacBook Air to certain monitors, it still has the same rating as the previous generation. FaceTime camera is still 720p. They could have bumped it up to 1080p, but they might they probably didn't want to do that due to cost reasons because it would probably cost maybe a hundred I would say fifty to a hundred dollars more for them to add it, and then what's going on right now? They probably don't have supply ramped up for this type of camera to go in the new MacBook Air, so they kept it the same. Still has the same ports. It still has Thunderbolt three, 
still has the same fast ratings that come with that Thunderbolt 3 port. Wireless, it's kind of a weird aspect here because the new Intel 10th generation chips, 10 nanometer chips, they support Wi-Fi 6 built onto the processor. And the MacBook Air, of course, you can see here, it only comes with Wi-Fi 5, 802.11ac, instead of AX, or Wi-Fi 6. So the iPhone 11s and the 2020 iPad Pro are... Both Apple's mobile devices have Wi-Fi 6, but the MacBook Air that was updated at the same time as this iPad Pro did not get Wi-Fi 6. So they probably told Intel that we just want the new processors in here, don't, don't put Wi-Fi 6 on the processor, and their wireless chip company Broadcom that they probably get their Bluetooth and Wi-Fi chips. They probably told them for the MacBook Air, we just want Wi-Fi 5 in the device and we're just bumping up the processor and that's it and more storage for the price. So that's the two upgrades they did here. Wi-Fi 6 would have been nice, but Apple had probably some strange reasons behind it. That's why they probably just kept it the same. In terms as the stereo speaker is still the same, you still get a headphone jack on the right hand corner of it. Keyboard, biggest upgrade to the keyboard is now your scissor switch mechanism. So it has a magic keyboard built into it, no more butterfly keyboard. Very good thing. In terms of everything else that's on this MacBook Air, still the same. So we'll take a look at the Mac Mini. The Mac Mini really got the worst of the upgrades for the price. It did not get the new 10th generation processors. So it still has the previous generation processors in them. It didn't get a RAM upgrade for the price. The only upgrade it got for the base price of $799, you get 256 gigs of storage instead of 128. It would have been nice if Apple would have updated the processors along with this and Wi-Fi 6, but the only upgrade they did here was your base storage for the price is now 256 instead of 128. No RAM upgrade for the price, no processor upgrade for the price, no Wi-Fi 6, no... No new design, no changing of the design or anything like that, of course. Maybe we'll see a new Mac Mini that will come with either a AMD processor or, more likely, an ARM-based Apple processor, which will be a true upgrade for this machine. It will probably make it even smaller, make it even cheaper. You probably won't need a fan on it, of course, because it will be passively cooled. So we'll see, maybe that's why Apple did not update this Mac Mini, only gave it a storage bump. Maybe they're going to want to put their new A-series mobile desktop chip in this device. So we'll have to wait and see what Apple does here. And the only other new thing that Apple has released is their spring cases and their Magic Keyboard accessories. So we'll take a look at the accessories they have offered. So for their accessories, we'll start by looking at their featured ones, which of course, they're going to highlight that, of course. So let's take a look at the Smart Keyboard, the Smart Keyboard Folio. This is the same one that Apple released in 2018, and they just probably did a minor update to it in terms of how it is designed for the new iPad Pro. Yep, yeah, that's all they really did for this. So that okay, that's just a minor update there, guys. Let's take a look at the sport loops for the Apple Watches. So they now come in a spring color. You have sunshine, vitamin C, surf blue, neon lemon, neon pink, pomegranate, Khaki, Alaskan Blue, Anchor Gray, Camel, 
Midnight Blue, Pride, and Product Red. So Midnight Blue, the Pride Band, and of course the Product Red Band are the ones that are available all season. So the other colors are currently the new spring colors. And for the iPhone 11 Pro Leather Folio, they feature three new colors. Raspberry, Deep Sea Blue, and Peacock. The, the other two colors, which is the Aubergine, which is like a dark purple, and the black is available year-round. And of course, with the silicone cases for the iPhone 11, they're going to feature three new colors, your cactus, grapefruit, and surf blue, which match the Apple Sport Bands. So we'll take a look at the Sport Bands here. So here are the new Sport Bands. So cactus, of course, grapefruit, surf blue. Berry, khaki, lemon cream, clementine, pine green, Alaskan blue, stone, and from pink sands all the way to product red are your ones that are available all year round. And the other bands that they offer, we'll take a look at the Nike Sport band. So here they are added new colors. So the first new color is your Black Lime Blast. You have your Midnight Turquoise and Aurora Green. And that's the only two new colors from Desert Sand Black all the way to Archaic slash Black. Those colors are available all year round so the only two new colors are the first two options. And the last new accessory Apple released this month is, of course, the Magic Keyboard. We'll take a look at those right now so we can see the pricing for those. Here's the new Magic Keyboard. So for the 12.9 inch iPad Pro, you have to pay $349. And right now you cannot pre-order it because it will be available in May. And for the 11 inch, it's starting at $299. So if you have the previous generation 2018 models, you do not need to upgrade to the new 2020 iPad Pros to use this Magic Keyboard. Your new iPad Pro that you have will work perfectly with this keyboard. The 2018 model will as well. And realistically, your 2018 model, when you, if you decide you want this magic keyboard with trackpad, it will make your iPad be a whole new experience of a device because on Tuesday, March 24th, Apple is going to release iOS 13.4. So the reason why you can't use these keyboards right now is that one iPad OS 13.3.1 is not supportive of their new accessory. So 13.4 has the capability built in to the operating system to take advantage of this Magic Keyboard. And the only thing we're waiting now is for May to come. So you guys can pre-order this keyboard if you want it. You can get it in May when they're ready to obviously deliver them and pre-order and whatnot. But as far as what Apple has released this month, it's a pretty nice upgrade. And if you are in a need for a new iPad Pro, and let's say you have the first or second generation one and you just want like a minor update to it, you can go ahead and get it. If you have like maybe an older iPad and you decide that you want to go towards an iPad Pro, you can either pick up the 2018 model or you can get the new one the 2020 model or you can wait till quarter four of 2020 to get the new updated model that's going to have 5g possibly mini led and probably some other hardware upgrades by then 
So it all depends on what you guys need and how much money are you willing to spend with the current situation that's going on, of course, right now. But otherwise than that, if you guys like the video, give it a thumbs up. And see you guys in the next.